Welcome to the Mike and JD Show YouTube channel. Thank you for being here. I want you to do me a big favor before you check out this clip. I want you to hit the like button. I want you to throw in a comment and make sure you're a subscriber to this channel. And then I want you to share this video with your friends. Help us defeat the algorithm. And then if you like this content and you appreciate this content, please head over to patreon.com slash the Mike and JD Show and support the show. That is how we actually get funded to be able to do this. So we thank you very much for being here. Um, and now enjoy the clip. almost four years since we've had any real significant controversy in, in this company. And uh, it all culminated this week with uh, Scott Demore. Um, depending on who you believe, he got fired, terminated, he quit. Uh, the, the wording in the press release said they've terminated his contract effective immediately. And um, which tells me that he was fired. Um, but they told the talent whenever they did their Zoom call, that he quit. I get the feeling it was a combination of the two. Meaning like they they were taught so they want you know let's let's double back. So they so Scott Demore essentially was removed from power. He was terminated and um per the press release as TNA president and they have placed Anthony Sicioni in, in his spot. Anthony Sicioni's a longtime fight network guy a long time, like Anthem corporate stooge. He's a bean counter. Um, he used to work for the score. Also, he's the one that helped uh, the score land WWE. Well, I don't know how much he involved with that. He was because, you know, he, for him to go from the score down to the fight network tells me he wasn't really a big part of that, but because you know, fight network is like access TV in the state. This is not, it's not a very big network, but so he uh, he's he's coming over. He was the head of like the Anthem Entertainment Group, and uh, they're bringing TNA under that like umbrella. Okay, so he was running the Anthem Entertainment Group, and then TNA was like its own entity over here, running independently of that of that entertainment group, and they were essentially you know answering to Len Asper, right? So they were getting like all of their budgets and stuff. They're getting it from the top. So what they're doing is, is they're now moving it from its own entity acting independently, which is what Demore wanted. They're folding it into this Anthem Entertainment Group, um, which I think they're just streamlining it and trying to be more cost effective, cutting the budget essentially of of Anthem, like not just TNA, but like Anthem as a whole, right? Like when you do that, you're telling me, okay, hey, we're just we, the term streamlining is very corporate speak, but I use it too in the military. Um, when, when you have like, you know, we, we had, we had a, this major clinic, right. They had like four different types of operations, right. You had like, we had one section that was working with, strictly with like the flyers and the one section, we had another one that like their job is to fly people out, right. Like their job is to take patients and get them to like a higher level care on a you know, back on the mainland in California, or they would have taken to Japan. So we had like one flight that specializes in like flying patients all over the world. And then we had another flight, another section that was um, in charge of all the occupational illnesses and stuff like that. And, um, and then we had another section that, that handled people that were outside of the flying community, kind of like your maintenance guys and all that stuff. Right. So, so we had like four sections operating independently of each other. Um, and they needed to cross pollinate more, right? Because they have a lot of the same specialty codes. I hope I'm not speaking too military speak, but, um, so like they're all medical technicians, right? Um, so like if you're not flying that day, you should be able to work over here and help out with the, you know, taking care of the pilots and stuff like that. Or if you, you're not taking care of pilots this day, you should be able to come over here and take care of like the grounds crew people, right? That are sick and things like that. Or you should be able to work over here with the occupational illnesses. Um, <clears throat> but because they were acting independently of each other, despite needing to cross pollinate more, they folded them under one section and had one leader. And I, it sounds like that's exactly what happened here. Um, so, TNA was acting independently of the rest of the entertainment group 
and um, which is weird because I thought they were more under the combat sports umbrella, which would be under Richard Schaefer. But I don't know what the hell's going on with that. Like that dude comes in head of uh, president of Anthem Sports, and we haven't seen anything. <laughs> it's like we've barely had any Invicta shows. We've had no boxing. They're supposed to buy a new mixed martial arts promotion. That never happened. So I don't know what that guy's doing, but it's probably just stealing money. Um, so because yeah, we've not seen anything in the Anthem Sports umbrella other than like a, like since he took over what, what three Invicta shows. One of them was in Boston. I think did pretty well. But um, yeah, so I, I, I think – if I'm reading the, if I'm deciphering through the corporate speak, like that's, that's what the idea was. They wanted them to be more cross pollinated in with their entertainment group. Okay. I don't know why they couldn't do that without, with, with Scott DeMore not in the company. Here's what I think happened. Okay. They're like, Hey, we're going to fold TNA under this Anthem entertainment group. Um, but we can't have two presidents and Sissioni's our guy. He's been our guy for 16 years. We're going to make him the president. We want you to stay with the company and you would be back to EVP. And he probably said, eat shit. And they probably gave him an ultimatum like, either you do this or you got to go. And he chose to go. So, yes, they put him in a position to where he had to quit, essentially. a lot of, That's what happens a lot of times, right? They will say, like, well, we'll give you an ultimatum. You either do this or you're done. And they say, I'm done. And then that way they can tell people, well, hey, look, he quit. Um, the bad part is, is that, is that in the press release, they said they terminated him and then they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. And then when they talked to talent, they said, Oh, well, no, he quit. Like he had an opportunity to stay and he didn't want to. Right. But if you're Scott Demore, like you worked hard to become the top guy and you see the writing on the wall, you don't want to go back to having to answer to some stooge like Sissioni. And that's what he is. He's just a corporate stooge. He's, he's a bean counter. Right. He's going to come in and, and ultimately he's he's there to get the budget back into play uh, to get it to be more manageable. Does it mean he's going to be cutting the budget? That's what the rumor is. That's what Joe Lanza said on his podcast. And he talked to somebody within the company that's a pretty reliable source. I don't know exactly who that is. I think I have an idea. Um, and I, I, I believe him when he says that. Uh, Dave Meltzer also was in The Observer saying that DeMore – was at odds with Len Asper and uh, the top of the company because he kept going to them asking for more money. And it was like pulling teeth. And um, so let's go, let's go, let's, you know, let's just, let's just go to the observer, you know, let's just do it. Um, we'll, we'll read this together. I read it, I read it uh, yesterday morning. It was like my morning coffee it's like my you know my dad used to read the newspaper in the morning this is what i did yesterday mm. so this is uh, from the observers it's got demore became the fourth person and arguably the top seven companies in the world to be removed from power in seven weeks with the announcement on february 7th that he's no longer in tna and the change comes after the company did its most successful live show in about eight years with bound for glory in las vegas and a second most pay-per-view show since well before the loss of spike tv Demore followed in the footsteps of Vince McMahon, uh, to obviously TKO, uh, Takami Obari, that'd be New Japan, and Rossi Ogawa, leaving only AEW, CMLL, and AAA as major companies and haven't had a major change at the top. And Demore was let go and replaced by Anthony Sissioni, who holds the position of Vice President of Operations and President of the Entertainment Business at Anthem Sports and Entertainment Inc., the parent company of TNA. Sissioni will be running TNA as well as continuing in his other duties. Um, so, and then this is where he goes on to say, so the story was that TNA would no longer be a separate company and uh, be a part, be part, not just working as a company under Anthem Entertainment Umbrella, but actually being a part of the company itself. So, so that's what I mean, right? And so like they were operating independently of the rest of the entertainment section and they're just trying to fold it in and kind of be more in sync and be more aligned with what they're doing over there. Um, and you know, based on a lot of the reports and uh, good buddy Gerard uh, put, you know, kind of put together some of the stuff in one of his uh, columns for a uh, body slam. Shout out Gerard. Um, <clears throat> that, you know, this was like this was kind of a known thing, probably like around the beginning of the year. Um, I know that in Dave's report, and I think Mike Johnson was reporting also that. You know, the uh, the corporate people were there in Las Vegas <clears throat> talking to talking to talent and you know asking them how the company worked and getting a gauge on things, getting a feel on things. So this was like a known thing for a little bit. And Demore 
<clears throat> and Demore was fighting against it, um, fighting so hard, in fact, that he he tried to actually buy the company because he was probably thinking like these people just, you know, they they probably want out. And he's like, and I, but I love this thing, and he, he's independently wealthy. Like his his family's got this like major construction business, and uh, he's a pretty rich dude. So he doesn't need all this bullshit, but he was like, you know, he went and got a loan, like got a proof for a loan and he was going to buy the company, but apparently they were way off on numbers. Um, actually, um, where it is, Anthem didn't even make a counter offer. There was like eat shit. And then <clears throat> knowing that this guy wasn't going to go away, they just got rid of him. So, um, so <sighs> there's a, you know, the, you know, I think we'll probably be covering a lot more of the details as the week goes on, as the weeks go on um about this i think you know one of the things that i thought was pretty interesting um was that demore in 2021 almost quit and that was like it's being reported for the first time this week um i'm trying to find it in the observer where he talked about it so that way i don't like misquote dave but essentially um essentially demore in 2021 whenever you know you know you guys remember in like 2021 at slammiversary when they had like that they had like a really big pay-per-view for slammiversary that year because it was built on them bringing in a lot of the fired talent from earlier that quarter and like the 90 days were up and like the day after was was uh was slammiversary and they ended up bringing in you know brian myers who's still there they brought in um the good brothers and heath who were all gone now and mickey james so the, and they they had all gotten fired earlier that quarter i think like they got fired in like april or may or something like that and then by july they were free of their contract and so the entire slam anniversary was built on bringing in these fired people <laughs> and they they ended up doing a really good number actually it was 20 i think it was 2020 that that happened um well then, in uh, 2021, oh, thank you, Nonzo, in the chat. Nonzo in the chat, correct me. Yeah, it was 20. It was 2020. Um, well, then in 2021, WWE did like another house cleaning, like in the summertime, and Braun Strowman, their former world champion, who was like a big star for them at the time, um, he he got released, and um, Demore basically had a deal in place for for Braun Strowman and they and leaked it to Mike Johnson of PW Insider and like they had actually started like teasing Braun for glory that year. I I remember cuz I you know I had the podcast at the time and I actually did some like I did some videos about it that did really good numbers and I don't know that people were all that excited like I personally was excited about it cuz I happened to be a, a fan of Braun um but like you know, there were there was some excitement and like it, there was some build for it, and then we we get to Slam Anniversary and like he just never shows up, and we're like, what the hell happened? Because they like they legit like we were all told like like they have a deal in place, like they weren't leaking that for no reason. Well, as it turns out, like he went to you know he had the deal, they had the agreement in place, and then he goes to get the money, and they he got rebuffed. Like the the top guys said, no, we don't think that you'll get your return on investment for that much money. And then he just never showed up. He actually ends up like he ends up showing up in um he ends up showing up in Ring of Honor later that year and he starts like a deal with EC3, the um that shitty thing that they did, the um the wow god, we made fun of it every week. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, he, he ends up showing up there and then he ultimately re-signs with WWE. And he's been there ever since. But yeah, it was it was it was like that. There were a lot of times where we we felt that. Uh, oh yeah, control your narrative. Thank you, Dre. Um, control your narrative. So there were a lot of times where we felt like this company was ready to take a leap and to take the next step, and then it just never happened. And that was that's kind of been the story of the company, where like you have this guy Scott Demore who's fighting this uphill battle to try to get this company back up to prominence, but the bosses aren't playing ball. And there's been like this constant battle and a constant fight for years. And, um, and now that fight is over and that's, and that's where I'm like, this move is kind of a depressing move because 
you know, word is from multiple reports that these guys are not looking to increase the budget, which that's the only way this company is going to grow is if they're willing to spend, right? And uh, so there's two ways, and I'm going to get to the second way. That first way is they got to be willing to spend a little bit of money, and they have been resistant to that. So much so that Scott Demore has quit and has, has threatened to quit on several occasions if he didn't get what he wanted, right? Um, and that you know you that that is kind of like an adversarial relationship. So I just don't think that this guy Sicioni is willing to you know fight the good fight to get this company back up to prominence. Anthem very much wants TNA to be cheap programming for Access TV and for Fight Network. I said it years ago. I was like, this company is not looking to grow. <laughs> like Scott Demore was, but Anthem was not. Like Anthem is, they're just like, look, just keep keep the overhead low, keep the cost down, and just keep providing, keep filling up hours of television for all the different services that we have, like our fast networks and the the app and stuff. Like all we care is that you keep filling up hours of TV, right? And and just keep the production cost down, keep the talent cost down, right? But Scott Demore was fighting against the power, trying to increase production costs and increase talent costs and going to them like, hey, can we get money for CM Punk? Hey, can we get money for Osprey? Uh, I don't know that they ever asked for money for Okada or uh, I bet they did try it like reports never came out, but I bet they did try for Mercedes Monet. Um, and they probably like like just couldn't get enough to even make an offer. So they just never did. So um, I, I just I just don't see this company. The, under the current construct wanting to do anything like that they're like okay we're happy with the budget we're happy with where we're at go out there and fill hours of tv and i think that's where it's going to be and I'm, I'm happy to be wrong and i'm happy to be surprised but i get the feeling that you know tommy dreamer is going to continue to do his paint by numbers booking you know it's like bumping into people in the hallway i think i think a speedball fought zachary wentz because like he was littering <laughs> so what 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 are we doing right it's like this just cheesy nonsensical storylines automatic rematches you know just and then bringing in wwe fireds and and having them fill out your your mid card right bringing in these geeks that nobody would ever pay to see like big con and dango and now you got simon gotch who knows how long he's going to be around but he's fighting your top guy at the next show like just bringing in these geeks instead of like, you know, young and exciting and hungry talent. You're just going to bring in your friends that you used to work with in WWE um, that you may have like Tommy Dreamer was like a guy that used to recruit talent that maybe he tried to recruit and to bring in a WWE and got them jobs there. And now they're loyal to him. So he's going to continue bringing those guys over here once they get fired. I get the feeling that that is just going to continue. So um, I don't think it's ever going to get bigger than it is right now. And that and that and that's the sad part of it. I would like to talk to this guy or like somebody to talk to the Sissioni guy. I'm like, what are your goals? And don't give me corporate bullshit speak because what he says is is he's trying to, you know, bring the talent over and cross pollinate them in with access, with gravitas, with all the other things they have, all the other entities that they have. Say, so, okay, but what's your goal for TNA? Right. Like, what 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 is your goal for attendance this year? Right. What is your goal for ratings this year? What is your goal for pay-per-view buys? Right. What What are those goals? That's what I want to know. What are your goals for TNA Plus? How many subscribers do you want to have by the end of the year? I I bet he doesn't have any. I bet I, I I'm almost willing to guarantee. And here's the problem when you don't have goals: if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. Right. And the audience will see that. It's like, look, these guys they're not going anywhere. Like they, they don't really have any, they're not trying to get to a place, right? And that that was that was why, you know, people gave up on the company because they they kept going down, 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 down. You know, at least in AEW, there are goals, right? They're trying, they're actively trying to get bigger. They're actively trying to secure another TV deal. They're actively trying to compete with WWE. So that creates a groundswell of support with their fan base and they get behind it and they love it. You're not going to see that with TNA because there's, they're not fighting anything. They're just existing. And that's going to be the problem going forward. Unless this guy has a different plan. 
And people are like, oh, well, I'm going to continue to support TNA no matter what because that's what Scott would have wanted. Well, we'll find out if Scott runs opposition because apparently he's got money to run his own promotion. I would not be shocked to see a Rossi Ogawa situation where Scott starts his own promotion and all of a sudden you start seeing these Scott Demore uh, guys and girls leaving TNA in a heartbeat. That wouldn't shock me at all because he's already got the home base in Windsor. He's got connections. You know, if I'm Billy Corgan, I bring Scott in. If I'm MLW, I bring Scott in. Because at least now you know you have a talent pool to, to pull from. And you got people that are loyal to him that you can bring into your company. And he can get you on the right track. He's proven that he can do that. I don't think he's a proven creative genius. I don't think that. I don't think that what he's done, what he's put on television has been all that brilliant. Um He's done a good job of getting this company in a direction where they're stabilized and they've been a little bit successful, but I don't think that, um, that he's, he's the guy that you want to bring in. If you want to like jumpstart your territory, like, you know, he's, uh, he's not that guy, but as far as business goes, he knows how to run a professional wrestling business and operate, um, pretty well and, uh, and manage talent. And uh, I, I think that's what he's done. Um, that's what he's been doing for years. So, and this is going to be the last thing I say about this because uh, we'll 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 move on. Because um, I get the feeling I'm going to be talking about this Demore stuff every week. With Demore out, they need to find somebody that is young and hungry, not only on the screen as talent, but they need to find somebody behind the scenes that is young and hungry with fresh ideas to take over the creative of the company. Because if it keeps operating the way that it is, it's going to be a disaster and quick. Like it's not, go it's not going to be good. I can tell you right now, there's not a single fucking person buying TNA plus because big con and PCO are wrestling on it. I, I just, it's not going to happen. Like nobody's, nobody's going to buy a subscription because Simon Gotch is here now. It's not. It's just. It's just not going to happen. They're creatively bankrupt right now. Is what it seems to me, right? Alex Shelley's a really good wrestler, but is anybody clamoring to see the Alex Shelley Moose match again? I don't think so. Especially not with the stipulation they just had. And I'm going to get into that. So they they need something. They need a spark. Um, but that's you know something I've been saying for years. Is Sissioni the spark? I doubt it. I I just don't think that he cares. I really don't. It's just another sh fucking bullshit thing he has to manage. He probably just doesn't care. Um, so, uh, I don't know. This isn't going to be good. The talent is, the morale is as low as it's ever been. The talent, I, I think that if they could, they would jump ship in a heartbeat. They would take those WWE deals or those AEW deals they were probably offered whenever they're negotiating their contracts last time. But they stayed with Scott because they trusted him and that he would put them in a prominent position and still pay them pretty well. That's uh, where they can have a comfortable life. Like, you know, Moose and Grace and Josh Alexander and Eddie Edwards and all these guys. They probably could have taken, you know, low end WWE or AEW deals, lost on TV every week, and, but still would have, you know, been fine. But, you know, they were being creatively fulfilled by a guy that they trust and Scott Demore, and they, now they have lost that. So, um, I, and that's, but that talent, that's why you don't sign a long term deal. Look, and if I'm, you know, a lot of people were wondering if Nick Nemeth has signed with TNA. If I were him, I wouldn't at this point because you don't know what this company is going to look like in six months. I'm not saying don't work there. You know, if you're on a per date deal, that's, I stick with that. Ali, I stick with that. Anybody out there that's negotiating with this company and they offer you a long-term deal, I say, suck my ass. You can pay me my independent rate and I'll, I'll work. I'll work 13 dates. And then at the end of that 13 dates, we can renegotiate, but I'm not going any, any further than that. Like that's, that's what I would tell them. So 